everyone, and welcome to the Publish What You Fund uh, webinar on using open aid data. I'm Charlotte, our advocacy assistant here at Publish What You Fund, and I'll be taking you through the webinar today. Before going through this recording, I would recommend you go to our webpage and download the materials provided there so that you can follow along. There is a sample of a spreadsheet that we'll be using later that will be faster for you to practice on than downloading the full thing. As well, there's a browser extension called IADI Decipher that we will be working with, so I would recommend downloading that now. So I'll just quickly go over the running order for today. We'll begin with a brief introduction and background to aid transparency. We'll talk about why aid transparency is useful and what kind of questions you can answer using the resources we'll be demonstrating today. We will then move on to the three main data portals that we'll be working with today. We'll start with OECD DAC and then move on to IADI, and finally we'll finish with the Open Bank, with the World Bank Open Data. So, why is aid transparency important? Aid transparency is important for a whole host of reasons and for a range of stakeholders, including donors, partner countries and their citizens, policymakers, journalists, program implementers, and taxpayers. It is a crucial step in accountability, both for donor and partner countries, to enable oversight of both resources and project performance. Partner countries and their citizens also need to know what, where, and how foreign aid resources are being planned for their own country, in part so they can better allocate their own domestic resources. Journalists can also play an important role in this accountability function. They are a crucial user category we'd like to see reached more. Um, access to aid information can also help policymakers and taxpayers understand where and how their tax dollars are being spent. Aid transparency also helps with donor coordination. So with access to timely and comparable aid information, donors will know what other donors are doing in the same sector or the same country, and thus avoid duplication of their development work. So who publishes aid data? One of the biggest areas of progress we've seen in the aid transparency movement over the last decade has been a significant increase in publishers. On IADI, for example, there are, over, there are hundreds of individual publishers of aid data. The biggest ones are the development departments of individual countries. So in the UK, that would be the Department for International Development, or the FCO. Um, in the US, there's USAID, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, the Department of State, and Canada, there's the Global Affairs Canada, for example. This can also include large private operations as well, such as the Gates Foundation. There are also big NGOs, such as Oxfam, Plan, and Save the Children, or UN arms, such as UNDP and UNHCR. Basically, any organization that deals even a little bit with international development could be a publisher. As you'll see as we go through the various tools you can use, there are different publishers on different portals. So the first organization we'll be looking at today is the OECD DAC. The OECD, or Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, is a group of 36 of some of the most economically developed nations. The DAC, or Development Assistance Committee, is their dedicated development arm. The OECD DAC, data, OECD DAC data contains the aid data from all of its members, as well as other major countries outside of the memberships, such as Saudi Arabia. You should be aware right now that none of the tools we'll be using today include Chinese data, so depending on what countries you'll be looking at, this could pose a challenge. Through the OECD DAC, you'll be able to find very high-level data. That is, you can trace aid flows from a donor country to a partner country. For example, we can show you how to figure out how much money the U.S. spent in Senegal in 2016. You can also get slightly more detailed information down to basic project level data. This would include a specific US project in Senegal, including the sector, like agriculture, what the project was called, how much money is budgeted for the project, and a comprehensive description of the project. There's some important things to know about the OECD before using their data. As a condition of membership to the DAC, members are contractually obliged to post their aid data, and as such, the data has gone through verification procedures. It is not, however, timely, all DAC data is backdated by at least 18 months, and the last full year that we have a full set of data for at the moment is 2016. We would be looking to get 2017 data up soon. Um, finally, OECD DAC data only represents official development assistance, or ODA. Um, so what you can do is think of ODA as traditional development assistance. Um, in the attached handout on our webpage, um, there is a more comprehensive definition of ODA, but for now, just think of o ODA or Official Development Assistance as just the what we traditionally understand as development assistance. So, there are two primary ways to access OECD data. 
First, we'll show you the CRS spreadsheet, which looks something like this. Um, we think this is the best way to access the data and is what we use when we are looking for information. Um, attached to the website earlier, it was also a sample spreadsheet, so this spreadsheet right here. Um, it will be easier to work with than downloading the whole thing if you'd like to follow along. If not, don't worry, I'll show you exactly what you'll need to do um, and you'll be able to check on it later. Um, so the first thing I want to do in order to access more high-level information like funding flows is to create a pivot table up here. So what we'll do is we'll select all of the data and we'll go to insert, pivot table, okay. So what a pivot table does is basically just organizes all of these entries, all of these data entries in, into a little something a little easier to read for you. Um, so it'll it'll just it's just a good way to organize and visualize the data. So it depends what kind of question you're going to want to ask. Um, today, let's keep it pretty basic for the sake of the webinar. So why don't we try and figure out how much money each organization or each country um, spent on official development assistance in 2016. And again, this sheet is just 2016. Um, there's a new CRS spreadsheet out every year. Um, so we're looking again, we're looking forward to the 2017 one, which should be coming out soon. So what you're first going to want to do is go over here and choose the fields. Um, so let's go to donor name. Um, so we're just going to try and figure out who has spent what money. So first we want to click on donor name and drag it down to rows. There we go. And all of a sudden we've got all of these rows here. Um, and then we'll go to how much money they spent. So let's go down to USD disbursement. Disbursement is just money spent. Um, and we'll drag that down to values. And what you need to do here is change it, click on this little arrow over here, go to value field settings and change it from count to sum. Not sure why it sticks on count, but that's not useful for you. What you want is the sum or the addition of all of the money that's been spent. And there you go. Um, right now it's alphabetical, but you can change it to, um, uh, you can change it to by value easily. Um, what we could also do is look at agency. Um, so this is something that is on the CRS spreadsheet that is not on some other um, ways to access this data. So this is a really useful part of uh, the spreadsheet. Um, agency just means that, you know, within these different organizations, so within the African Development Bank, there's going to be more than one agency that gives that is a donor agency. So there's like a, I'll show you. So you can just go to agency name and add that to rows as well. There you go. So the African Development Bank, um, there are all these different agencies within these organizations. Uh, next, we can add different kinds of filters. So what you can do down here, um, it depends what kind of filter you want. If you're looking for the type of money that they spent or the type of projects that they spent their money on, we could go down to, if we're looking for maybe environment or gender, um, so if we go down to gender or environment, sorry, and drag that down to filter, that'll come up here. And we can see there are different levels of environment. Um, it depends what organization you're looking at, but the OECD has different categories. So if it's principally targeted towards an environmental project, it'll likely be um, one of these two. Um, you can read the specific guidelines. Gender has a similar one, trade. Those are all specific guidelines that you can read later. Um, but just for now, we'll just look at one and see what happens. Here we go. So now we can see the UAE spent uh, 20,000, or yeah, spent this much money on uh, environmental programs in 2016. You know, we can look at two, that'll be a slightly different number. Um, also environmental program, but just different concentration. So just be aware of that. Um, so that basically is how you use the OECD uh, DAX spreadsheet to make a pivot table. Um, another useful thing you can do if you want slightly more detailed information on the projects is go back to the main sheet here um, and create a filter up at the top. So sort and filter up here, just pop a filter on it all um, and then go down. And then so to look at the different kinds of projects, so if we want to look at a little more specific projects just to show you what's involved in these. Um, we can look at a specific organization. So let's go back to the African Development Bank. Go OK. And then now all of a sudden we only have African Development Bank programs. 
Um, next, we'll look at specific country maybe that this um, money went into. So we go over here, just scroll over and go to recipient name. Um, so why don't we look at Botswana? I'm just doing higher up ones here. There we go. Um, and so now all of a sudden you had thousands of entries and now you have five or six and they're just African Development Bank projects that happened in Botswana in 2016. So if you want to see what, what kind of what other kind of information is held um, in this spreadsheet, we can go across. Um, some of these are not useful to you. They're just sort of internal categorizations. Um, here we have this one. It's the only ODA project. Um, the other ones are other official flows. Um, so that's also not particularly useful to you. Um, so don't worry about that and just stick on the ODA ones. Um, so here we can see how much money was spent this year. Um, disbursements, again, just means money spent. Um, there are also commitments, uh, which sometimes are posted, sometimes are not. And if we keep scrolling over, um, you'll get to things like the purpose of the project, uh, the sector the project is in, so education. Um, you can also find a short description of the project. So here's the project title. Um, that title doesn't tell us too much. Um, again, some projects do, some projects don't. Um, the quality of the data does vary a little bit, um, just based on what, what, it, what the organization decides to, to put in. Um, here we have a short description. Um, basically what we know right now is that this is an education program up here. Um, so sometimes you'll be able to find really useful information, sometimes there'll be a little less here, um, but you'll be able to get a bigger or a better understanding of what the project is, how much money was spent on it, um, sometimes you might even have where in the country um, the project happened um, and what agency within the donor organization posted um, or put together this project. So that's the kind of information that you can get from the CRS spreadsheet. It's relatively detailed, um, which is really useful. Um, and it's definitely, it's what we use um, in order to be able to access um, pretty good and quick access project information. Um, so that's really useful. Uh, the next tool we're going to show you um, is also a, this is just a different way to access um, CRS or OECD DAC data. So it's through this, work, this website called Quiz. Um, and basically, Quiz is a really useful uh, way to get just a really simple, quick answer um, faster than using the spreadsheet. Um, so we're just going to navigate to this page here. I've got it open already, but you can just see up here. Um, you can enter that. Uh, website, or you can just probably type OECD quids into Google and this will come up. So quids will not give you, off the bat, you should know, quids will not give you um, agency or filters in the same way that the spreadsheet does. You can get sectors, um, but it, it's really good to be able to just get a quick answer to maybe compare two countries, the spending of two countries um, within another country, or just you know, if you want to know just like how much money did the U.S. spend in Senegal in 2016, this is the fastest way of doing it. So what you'll do is select a donor. So you go over donors here, um, browse donors. So let's choose, let's choose two countries for today. Um, we'll go to Canada and we'll do the United States um, just so I can show you the comparison abilities. Um, all recipients, so let's untick that and let's just look at Senegal. Um, but so you could do all of the money that those countries spent as well. That's always possible. Um, it just depends on the, the question that you're asking. Um, but this will give you a few different options. So that's really good. So we go down to Senegal. Um, and just press continue. That's fine. Um, we're going to keep it on ODA for now as well as disbursements. Again, disbursements is money that has been spent already. Um, all sectors, again, we'll keep it on all sectors just for simplicity. But just to show you, so you can do education, you can do health. Um, these are just like various development sectors that money can be spent in. So if you want to look at agricultural projects, those are down here. Um, but we'll just keep it on all sectors for now. Um, and finally, we're going to pick 2016 and not 2017. You can see this little eye here. Um, it's just telling us that, as I mentioned earlier, 2017 is not entirely complete yet. So we're just going to look at 2016. Um, and then we go down here to get the results and display the data. Just loading pretty slowly right now. Um, 
There we go. Um, so what you can do is display either Canadian or United States data. You have to go one country at a time, but you can toggle between the two here just as a comparison. Um, so we'll look first at the United States um, because that's the data that has been loaded. So uh, here we go. Um, we've got Senegal. You can see every um, the amount of money that Canada has spent in Senegal every year for 2012 through 2016. Um, and you can toggle over and look at the United States too. Um, so you, it's just a good mechanism for comparison. Um, so if that's the kind of answer you're looking for, it's just a quick question. Um, the OECD quiz is a better way of doing that than fiddling with the spreadsheet. Um, both will give you the answer, um, but this is just a bit faster. Uh, so that basically is how um, the CRS or OECD DAC data works. Um, so it's pretty easy to use. Uh, and yeah, so there's that's OECD. Um, those are the two ways we would recommend you using it. Um, it's really good for just finding um, either a little more detailed information on projects in the spreadsheet or really high level information through quids. Um, generally speaking, it's pretty high level either way. Um, and it's good for just understanding the basics of funding flows and development. So, the next one we're going to look at is the Aid International Aid Transparency Initiative, or IATI. Um, one of the defining features of IATI is that it allows a large number of publishers from around the world who all use their own data formats to publish together in the same format. IATI is a common global standard for publishing data in a comparable way. All the data is accessible in the same place, which is called the IATI registry. Um, IATI began in 2008 and is the largest repository of open aid information in the world. And it now includes hundreds of publishers who publish data on their international development information. Information published to IATI is wide ranging and covers everything from very high level information, such as overall country budgets, to more granular data, including project impacts in local communities. So in comparison to OECD DAC data, you can get much more granular, detailed data from IATI, specifically at the project level. IATI data is also published more regularly, with some donors publishing yearly, others quarterly or monthly. Therefore, if you're looking for the most up-to-date information, IATI would be the best place for you to look. So what is contained on IATI? The IATI standard is divided into two major sections here the organization file and the activity file. The organization file contains the strategic information pertaining to the whole organization, such as its total budget, bilateral country budgets, and country strategies. For example, if I wanted to know how much the US were spending in Senegal, that would be an easy question to get from the organization file. Um, there you can also track budgets and see how much is being budgeted by sector and compare the sectors. The activity file, on the other hand, over here, has project level information, such as a specific education or health project. The project level data includes information such as project title, description, budgets and expenditures, subnational locations, relevant documents and results. So if donors publish timely, comprehensive and forward looking data, then IADI can provide an overall picture of assistance going to a selected recipient country, as well as more granular information on individual donor portfolios. There are over a million activities currently listed on IADI. Um, however, this is a really uh, interesting and encouraging start, but it's still not enough. There's really no limit to the amount of information we would like to be able to see on IATI. Um, so we're doing really well so far, um, but we still have a lot of work to do. Um, IATI data in conjunction with other sources is a crucial tool in being able to create landscapes of what's going on in a country, and it can be an, a source for incredible detail on projects going on all over the world. So the first tool we're going to look at is called, uh, in a main way to access IATI data, is called um, IATI Decipher. Um, and we think it's the, it's the best way to access um, the organization file data. Um, so again, keep that in mind when we're looking through, we're not looking at activity file or project level data, just organization file data. Um, IATI Decipher uh, was built by Publish What You Fund, and it's a browser extension. Um, so a link to this was on our website where you found this, uh, this video. Um, in order to be able to download it. It works at the moment 
um, as of December 2018 when I'm recording this. At the moment, it works in Chrome and Firefox. Um, so we would recommend you download from one of those. Um, if you don't have either of those um, browsers or if your computer, if you're on a work computer um, with security um, provisions that doesn't allow you to download extensions, um, then there is at the moment a web version that is in beta. Um, it does not necessarily, it won't, won't necessarily work quite as well. It hasn't been tested quite as much as the um, extension version. So if you're able to download the extension, um, we would definitely recommend that instead. Um, but for our purposes for the webinar today, um, the, web, the web function should work out. Um, so again, this extension looks to the organizational file, which contains high level and strategic data only. So it won't give us project level data. So once the project, or once the plugin has been installed, you can access it from whatever site you're on. That's why I'm on just like a blank Google page right now. Um, it doesn't matter what site you're on because it'll be up here in this little eye over here. So what you can do is if you're looking at, if you want to look at the organization file of the specific uh, donor agency, you go to click on it. And then here we can enter USAID. Uh, and there we go. So it'll just open in a new tab. And this is the IID standard sort of home page. And what happens when you have the, um, the plugin over here is that you get this new visualization button. So this wouldn't ordinarily be on this page here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the organization visualize button. And it'll take us here to the summary page. Now what this page shows you is essentially just how many documents in each of these categories um, the Department of State and USAID have. Um, so you can see they have lots of budget information, specifically recipient budget, but country budgets. Um, this is just a good overview to look at what kind of information they do publish and where they publish extensively. Um, so let's first look at budgets. So we'll go over here and we clicked on budgets up here. Um, so this is just total budgets. So this will give you an answer to how much money we're in the budgets of USAID and state um, every year since 2005. That's what we have here. Um, this is USAID does a good job posting forward looking budgets. Uh, not all organizations do that. Um, so that's to say that like um, these organizations, these budgets up here um, have not necessarily been spent money yet, but that's what is budgeted for next year. Um, so we can see that there. Uh, again, not all, all unlike uh, OECD DAC, um, IADI data is not verified um, and it's not mandated. Um, so the quality of it can go up, up and down depending on what the organization, the publishing organization decides to post. Um, so you will not, you, you shouldn't expect to see the exact same quality of information for every donor you're looking at. And things can sometimes be a bit different, um, not even just in quality, but just in the way that they post um, or just what information is being posted. Um, so with budget lines, you can also sort by sector. So if we just look at agriculture, we can see the agricultural budget for these two organizations here. Um, next, there's recipient organization budgets. Uh, it doesn't look like they publish those. Um, again, that's specific to USAID and state. Some organizations do, some organizations don't. Um, finally, we have recipient region budgets and recipient country budgets. Those are basically the same thing. So for today, I'm just gonna show you country budgets for the sake of expediency. Here, um, what you can see is how much money has been budgeted for a specific country and a specific sector. Right now, it's looking at all of Afghanistan. But what we can do is again, go and look at Senegal. And this is the country budget for USA and state in Senegal. Um, and we can look at agriculture if we wanna look at sectors um, and then we go. So this is how you get just like a really quick answer to what, you know, what kind of money is you, are USA and state? What, what kind of, um, you know, realm are they in in terms of spending in agriculture in Senegal in you know, 2016? Um, so that's a really quick way to do that. This is the high level information you'll be able to access on IID Decipher. Uh, next, we have expenditure data up here. So next to budgets, we can go there. Um, and you'll see that uh, this USA and state post their data in a way that allows you to see different countries. But for expenditures, it does not post um, sectors. So again, that's specific to this organization. Some organizations do, some don't. Um, so just be aware of that sometimes it's difficult to find. Um, so if you want to just look at expenditures, again, this is amount of money spent, not amount of money budgeted, um, then you'll be able to find it for only the whole of the country, not for the sector. But sometimes you will. Uh, it just depends on the organization doing the posting. Uh, finally, we have documents. 
Uh, this is one of the really cool parts of IATI, I think, anyway, is that there are thousands and thousands, uh, over 22,000 documents uh, posted on IATI. Um, so what you'll be able to do with these documents um, is um, basically these are strategic high-level documents. Um, so, for example, if you want to know what USAID's strategy was in Senegal, so what, what they were looking to achieve overall in the country, this is where you'd be able to find that information. So we can go to a uh, country here and we can look at Senegal again. I'm just sticking with the same country so you'll be able to see like, you know, um, how you're able to build an understanding of what's going on in these countries through these various tools that we're using. Um, and if we want to look at strategies, we can go to country strategy paper here, but there are all these different kinds of papers that you could look at. And here we have the country development cooperation strategy for Senegal um, for these five years here, or seven. Um, so you'll be able to, so if, if you open that paper and read through it, you'll be able to get a lot of really interesting uh, information on the big overarching strategies of USAID and state and their development strategies in the country of Senegal for those five, for those seven years. Um, so yeah, this is really important um, and it shows that um, IATI is, it's not just a data storage, it's more of a, a library really, um, and that's a good way to think about it. Um, there's just so much information you can get on it. Um, and these documents can be really, really useful, um, and they're all in one place, so you don't have to go rooting around through USAID's um, document storage or looking at another organization's document storage to see where they put them, how they put them up. Um, they're all here in a really standardized format, um, so that's really useful. Um, so one of the things you need to know about IATI's or the, about um, Decipher is that you can only go one country one by one. You can't do multiple queries at a time. Um, so if you're looking for a quick comparison, this might not be the best way to do it. Um, but if you're looking for more detailed information um, on high level strategies, um, country budgets, this is definitely the fastest um, and easiest way to do it. Um, finally, the last thing to show you here is if you click up here on the source XML, um, IID Decipher is a visualization tool. So it's a plugin that is added sort of on top of where the actual information is and it pulls from from where the actual information here is in source XML. Um, so most of you won't need this, but it's just to show you, um, if you are particularly good at reading XML data, then that would be useful for you. Um, if you just click on this, this is the, what the actual data looks like. Um, this is where the data is pulled from in order to be visualized on IID Decipher. Um, so you can see that it's just a lot more complicated. Um, it's pretty difficult to deal with unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, and you pretty much have to be taught how to use it. Um, so that's why we built this visualization tool here, just so that people uh, will be able to find and access information much more quickly in a way that's like a little more uh, intuitive for the layperson. Um, so yeah, IID Decipher basically is the best uh, way of accessing strategic level information. Um, however, this information is really only a small part of the information contained on IID. So next what we're going to do is we're going to look at the activity file data through a tool called DeepWorld. So again, activity, um, so dportal is a separate web page that you can see. I've already navigated to it, but if you just, um, if you Google so this attachment here, um, you'll be able to come to this page. Um, it's a separate web page, which applies your search queries to the activity file. So again, we just looked at the organization file, now we're looking at the activity file. Um, and it visualizes the data in a way that makes it much easier to understand. So a bit like IID Decipher, but it is owned and housed at the IID Secretariat. Um, so this is the home page here. So let's just look at what kind of information we can get from DeepWortle through the activity file. So we'll go to recipient country um, and we're going to put in Ghana. Um, just we can look at a few different countries here. Publisher, um, that is the organization or the country that is the donor. Um, or the organization. So we can just go, let's look at DFID, so the Department for International Development here. Um, next we have sector group. Um, this, is, this is the broad sector groups that the smaller sectors are contained in, which is a bit, um, so there's a sector group and a sector, so it's a bit confusing. But basically this is the bigger one. So if you want to look at just agriculture, that's what you get it. But if you want to look at agricultural economics, um, you know, aquaculture, something a little more specific, that's where you would find the sector. Uh, we're just going to keep it on all of them right now. Um, for activity status, 
Um, you can see this is pretty self-explanatory. It's all the diff different um, ways along the pipeline an activity can be. So has it been canceled? Is it in implementation? Um, is it in identification? Is it afterwards? Um, so all of those kinds of things. If you want to look at only activities that are being conducted right now, this is where you would figure that out, or only activities that have been done in the past, that again is where you would pick that. Uh, year range, again, pretty self-explanatory. Um, so let's just go to 2016. We'll look at a little more recent um, organizations uh, and years, so 2019. Um, policy sector marker, finally, this is similar to what I showed you in the CRS spreadsheet earlier, um, is that you can pick sort of different filters that while you're organizing, while um, you may be focusing on agriculture up here, what you also want to know is how is, did these agricultural projects have anything to do with um, the environment or did they have anything to do with climate change or trade or gender? Um, was there anything else involved in these projects uh, that you can look at? Um, and that's where policy markers come in. They're really useful and to be able to search from them is a new feature on ePortal um, that uh, makes it much easier to understand. So I'm just gonna click gender here um, and I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at all of the projects that have gender as a um, target in any way. So I'm not clicking on is not targeted, but everything else I'm gonna click on. And this way we'll be able to find um, if there are any projects that have anything to do with agriculture and gender. So here it says we've already found five activities. So let's just go to explore results and look at those activities in more detail. So we can see that all of these activities, unsurprisingly, given the year range I've picked, are active projects. Um, there are five total projects. And one publisher here, that'd obviously be different considering we only published from, or we only searched through one publisher. So let's click on active projects here. Um, and we'll just look at the first one that comes up, but here I'll give you the list of all of them. Um, so let's go to market development in Northern Ghana evaluation. Um, so this is the kind of information on activities that you'll be able to find through dportal. So we'll just go through this and I'll show you what you can understand from this. Um, we've got the title up here and reported by, unsurprisingly, DFID, or the Department for International Development. Um, the recipient country is Ghana. Um, this seems pretty normal, um, although many, um, you'll find that actually there are several projects that are conducted in multiple countries. So here it would be really useful to be able to see in a different pie, pie graph how much money went to each of those countries. Um, so that's something that's pretty standard as well. Here, pretty self-explanatory, you have planned start date and planned end date. Um, you also have an actual start date just to verify in case it started late or early. Um, as we all know, sometimes things don't quite go to plan. Um, so having an actual start date is pretty useful there. So we can see this is a planned seven year project that is currently active. Um, so who is involved? Uh, again, the Department for International Development, they are the funding organization, the accountable organization, um, their government organization here. Um, what you also have, importantly, is the implementing agency. Um, so that is the organization that DFID is giving money to to actually implement this project. Um, or organizations like DFID don't usually go in to a country and do everything themselves. They have uh, professional organizations whose job it is to do that, um, which is likely the case of WYG International here. Um, so having um, listing the implementing agency is really important because a lot of times they themselves will also have some good information on what's going on in this activity. Uh, next, we have description down here. Um, so this description is a bit sparse. Um, it basically tells us this is an agricultural development um, project um, that looks at um, sort of uh, its business development, essentially. Um, so if you sort of are aware of that realm of work, then you'll have a better understanding of what this is. If not, then it might be a bit jargony for you. Um, again, the descriptions do uh, vary depending on the, the organized, both the organization uh, posting them and the uh, project itself. Um, so sometimes organizations will post uh, no description. Sometimes they'll just copy and paste the title. Uh, sometimes the description will just be an internal sector code that no one can understand. Um, so don't expect the descriptions to always be perfect, um, but hopefully um, we can always hope that they will be. Um, so just, just know that because um, posting to IATI is uh, not mandated in the same way that it is with DAC, things do change depending on who the publisher is. Uh, next, we have the sector. So given this is an agricultural business development project, um, we have agricultural development, agricultural services, and sort of business institutions up here. All of this makes sense. 
Um, sometimes these are useful, sometimes they're not. Um, again, it just depends on the project. Next, we have budgets. This is pretty straightforward. This just tells us how much was budgeted for this project for each year. Um, there's nothing you can click on here. This is just you know, giving us just straightforward budget information. Uh, next, we have transactions, which can be a little more detailed. Sometimes they're not. In this case, it's not specifically detailed. Um, but what you can tell is just, you can compare it to the budgets up here even. Um, this is just DFID, the provider, sending money to WYG International, the receiver, uh, for technical and advisory services. So basically for implementing the project. Um, sometimes, again, transactions can be incredibly detailed. They can be anything down to a car rental, a, a cell, buying a, a cell phone. Um, to something a little more high level, like just the transfer of money from provider to receiver, um, which is fine. That's just um, how DFID has chosen to implement these transactions here. Um, so they're not going to tell you a whole lot else other than uh, that information you might be able to get from WYG International if you were able to either contact them or maybe Google them. So that's why it's good to know um, who the implementing agency is. Uh, next, we have policy marker down here. So again, which is what I showed you, that gender, what we, look, we looked for with the gender um, earlier. Um, there's also different policy markers this has, this includes other than gender, like aid to the environment, which is a significant objective. So those are both policy markers as well as trade development. Um, so all of that's a principal objective and these two are significant objectives. So there are different levels of objectives they can be at. Um, others, it looks like they were tested against, but um, didn't. this project didn't, um, seek to actually have those as objectives in the end. Um, so these, you can just see a little more information on what kind, what project, uh, what kind of work this project is looking at. Um, given what we've seen so far in the information of this project, um, it is not completely clear why this would be a gender equality project or even an aid to the environment project. Um, but that's okay, sometimes it's not obvious. Sometimes we're looking for that somewhere else. Um, but that hopefully would be something maybe we would try, try and find through DPortal. Um, but so let's just keep looking and see if we can find any more information on this. Um, so finally, um, and this is a really interesting thing that um, some organizations do, some don't, if it does, MCC in the US does, is that they have a family tree. And this is just really useful because it will give you actually more information about the activities that this activity is linked to. Um, so you'll see that this activity is actually a child of this parent activity right here. Um, is along with all of these other siblings over here. So this kind of makes sense, given that this uh, project, um, you know, was a little bit small, um, clearly, uh, and didn't have a lot of information on it. There was no attached, uh, there were no attached documents. Um, we didn't get a location or a subnational location of this project. Um, so with, with smaller projects like this, or with what looked like a bit internal projects, um, hopefully you'd be able to find a family tree that would tell you what larger project it's a part of. So let's just go quickly and look at this parent organization to see what other kind of information we can get on this project here. So market development in Northern Ghana. Um, so clearly we were looking at the evaluation before, if you remember from the title. Um, so all of this makes sense. Now here you can all of a sudden see that there's tons more documents. Um, and this is likely where you would be able to understand why this project was tagged as environmental or gender, um, because it will be in these sort of annual reviews uh, maybe the tender or the contract that's happening. Uh, the business case is also really useful. Um, annual reviews are excellent for seeing the impact of a project, how many people uh, worked in the project, um, you know, what the results were for that year. Um, sometimes there'll also be midterm reports. Um, and it, these documents really are extremely useful for this kind of information here. Um, so that's what you're going to want to be look at, looking at for. Um, and that's probably where you're going to be finding that uh, more broad information on what actually is going on in the project. Uh, recipient country, again, the same. And the rest of this information will be more or less similar. Uh, it looks like there's one more implementing agency here. Um, and there you can click on them as well. I'm not going to do it now, but just, you'll, you'll go to the site, their site on dportal as a publisher as well. Um, then you can see all of the children that this project has, one of which will have been the activity we just looked at. Uh, one thing to note here is the location activity uh, of the activity is not uh, particularly useful. It does just say Ghana um, and gives us the coordinates for the country of Ghana. Um, so this is not a subnational location. Ideally, we will we would be looking for a location within a country to show us like where in that country this this activity was happening. 
Um, this is likely a rural uh, activity, seeing it's agriculturally involved, so it wouldn't be happening in the capital city um, in all likelihood. So where, what rural areas does it focus on? Um, that's not something they're posting. Uh, that might, however, be something that is posted in the documents above. So you might be able to still find that information somewhere else. Um, ideally, what we would be looking for um, with uh, location data is uh, a heat map. And that's an option you can have on dportal. Uh, it depends how the publishers work again. Um, but let me just show you what a heat map would look like. I'll just got this open on the next tab here. So this is a heat map for another for another publisher organization that we were looking that I have been looking at, um, and you'll see right away it's um, a little more useful. You can see where in countries in country or um, projects are happening. However, um, a thing with this heat map that you that I would advise you look out for, and it's why I've chosen to show you this one, is that you can kind of see that all of the activities seem to be concentrated in the capital cities. Um, now, obviously, this is probably not where all these activities are happening. Um, for example, in an agricultural project, it's not going to be happening in Abidjan entirely. It might be happening farther away um, in agricultural areas of the Ivory Coast. Um, so this means that this publisher has probably just put in the coordinates for the capital city and said, all right, fine, that's where it's happening in, New York, in the country. Um, so just watch out for that. Even if there is a heat map that has been provided, it might not necessarily be the most accurate. Um, so this is just a bit of a red flag when you're looking at data to say like, ah, yes, all of these organizations or projects seem to be happening in the capital cities and that just doesn't really seem like it could be true. Um, so you might want to just dig a little deeper to find out where exactly these, are, uh, these projects are happening. Um, so that's basically how to use dportal. Um, along with uh, the different project or the different project locations, there are a few other issues that we can look at um, with the portal. Um, just basically what to watch out for here. Um, as well as the location data, um, there's a bit of a problem with double counting. Um, it's just something you have to be aware of. Uh, and it's a bit of a quirk of the deportal itself. Um, so what you can do, what, what might happen, and what you have to watch out for is that, for example, um, the USAID gives $10,000 to Plan USA. Um, and Plan USA then spends that $10,000 on a project in Ghana, for example. Um, USAID can post that $10,000 to dportal, as can Plan, Plan USA. Um, so what you'll find is that there's $20,000 being counted when really it's just the same $10,000 moving along the pipeline. So just be careful for that. Um, something that sometimes helps is having these projects linked. Um, that doesn't always happen on dportal. Uh, publishers don't always do that and there's not always an option for it. Um, so it's just just being aware of how you're following the money. Um, sometimes there's nothing you can do about that, and that's just um, unfortunately the way the data is working out right now. Um, but hopefully that will be something that is looked at in the future. Uh, finally, there's just a bit of a, a quirk with the portal here in the search feature that I'll show you. Um, it doesn't always work the way you think it will. Um, so we'll just go to the top of this here, and we'll go back to the home page. And what can happen is I'm just going to search. Um, in, not in the explore filters part, but just in the, in the, in the uh, uh, search bar here, which is probably where a lot of you will want to search when you first see this, just to like look at what's going on. But it's just different, there are two different ways to search this and you have to be aware of them, otherwise you're gonna get really different um, results. So the first way to do this, I'm gonna put in crown agents. Um, so basically, Crown Agents are a publisher. Um, they're an implementing agency. Um, so I'm just going to put that in and like, oh, look, they come up down here. So I'm not going to do anything other than it says press enter over here. So I'm just going to press enter. And we get 735 activities, which seems like a lot, but fine. What would happen, however, if I clicked on Crown Agents down here instead of pressing enter is that you get seven activities because that has taken it, Deportal has taken the clicking on that um, Crown Agents that came down to searching exclusively by them as a publisher. So what this shows you is that these are seven activities that Crown Agents are a publisher for. However, those 735 activities we saw earlier um, were actually just activities that Crown Agents were referenced in or involved in. So it just searched all activities for any mention of Crown Agents and gave you 735 entries. So if you're looking for something like that, if you're looking for, you know, were they involved in any way or mentioned in any way in um, this 
uh, in any activities, then you're going to get a lot more. And what you're going to want to do is just press enter instead of clicking on the actual entry. But if you're only looking for crown agents or a specific publisher, then you do have to make sure to click on the entry that pops down so that it knows to search it as a publisher as opposed to just something it's looking for everywhere. So just be careful about that. Um, that's just a, a quirk of the way uh, that dportal works. Um, and so it's sometimes a bit of a problem, um, but it's just something to look out for. So the last, uh, last tool we're going to be looking at today is World Bank Open Data. So the World Bank Open Data portal has significantly more information than simply aid flows. So it's not just aid data like what we've been looking at in the previous two uh, portals. This is also development data. Uh, so the portal has statistics on uh, information like maternal mortality, adult literacy, percentage of the population with access to electricity, um, various economic indicators, and basically a whole host of other development indicators if you're looking to get a broad understanding of the development landscape in a country. So let's just navigate to the World Bank Open Data page here. I've just um, already got it loaded up here, but if you Google that, that's what you'll see. Um, and we can go and search by indicator first. So what we're going to do here is just browse by indicator. Um, and you'll see that there are hundreds of indicators. Um, and they get really detailed. Uh, literacy rate adult total. Um, you know, this is the education part here. Um, but there are tons of different ones. Um, energy and mining. Um, so what we're going to look at for today and what we've used in previous projects that's really useful is just look at the aid effectiveness section. But again, all of these are useful for development data. We have net ODA received as a percentage of GNI, so as gross national income. Um, so that just basically gives us a little bit of an understanding of maybe the aid dependency of a country. Um, not always, um, but it's, it's just a good understanding of that. Um, so let's just click on that indicator and see what we can see. So here, it's giving us the aggregate total for the whole world. Um, and if you mouse over it, you'll see the specific numbers. So this is the whole world, but it's all, in all likelihood we're going to want to see um, specific countries. So if you just scroll down, it'll give you all the countries in alphabetical order, which you can just change to by number here. Um, and then that will give you a good comparison as well um, for, for how countries compare to other ones. So you, if you might see a country and you think, wow, that's, that's a really high number, and then you realize it's actually at the bottom of the list. Um, this is a, that's really useful for comparisons. So here we can see South Sudan is at the top of the list, um, which is not terribly surprising. Um, and if we just scroll down, we can look at maybe where Ghana is, um, you know, see how they fare as we've been looking at them today. Um, so let's just click on Ghana and get a better um, graph of their information here. Um, so you can see how they fared over the years too. Um, helpfully, they have data from you know from 1960s. So this goes back a long way. Not all countries have that. Obviously, South Sudan will only have going back to I think 2011. Um, so you can just see how um, the um, percentages have gone up and down over the years, and how actually at the moment it's only 3.15. So that's pretty low, and it's significantly lower than its peak in 2004 at 16 which is still significantly lower than where South Sudan was over here. <clears throat> so um, that's just the kind of information that you can get on uh, the World Bank open data. So you, see, you can see it was searched up here through these two. Um, you can also compare countries. Um, so why don't we look at um, South Sudan in comparison to Ghana? And what that will do, there you go. And what that will do is aggregate, put them both together in the same graph. So you can see how tiny the um, percentage of Ghana's looks compared to South Sudan, um, but also how early this is in South Sudan's development. Um, so this is just a really useful graph. Um, now you can see this searching both of them. Um, you can do things with, uh, you know, you can do this with all of the different indicators that I showed you. So education, healthcare, um, any of those are really useful. Um, so that was just one indicator, one country or two. Mm. But it just shows you the basics of how this website works. And it would, be the, it would be the same really for any of the other countries and indicators as well. Um, so as you can see, the World Bank is a great resource for getting just good landscape on a country. 
um, and can just really help in understanding the basics of the economic and social, social situation you're working with. Um, so like, that's, that's pretty useful for just basic um, development understanding. Um, and those are really the three tools that we're going to be looking at today. Um, hopefully you have now a better sense of the aid data tools that are out there, um, as well as the types of questions that you could answer using them. Um, as you saw, OECD DAC is great for high-level data, uh, global information. Um, however, it has more limited, although reliable, project-level data. Um, with IATI, you can get sort of broad organizational and country-level data, as well as overall budget data. You can also get more granular project-level information. Um, finally, with the World Bank, um, as we just saw, you can sort of get a full picture of the country development landscape and how the aid that you've just been looking at fits in. So as an example of how all of this data can be used um, is a recent project we actually did studying the effects of US foreign assistance. Um, we used the OECD data to understand how much money was being spent. We then used IATI to understand the effects, specifics of the project, and then World Bank data to understand the kind of poverty problem we were looking at. So using these three organizations um, and portals in conjunction actually gave us a really good, um, pretty solid understanding of the aid situation in a country. Um, and yeah, so you can just get sort of um, really start figuring out what's going on in a country. Um, and this is a really good start to do that um, in conjunction with all using all three. You will get um, a pretty broad um, and specific understanding of sort of the aid and development situation, um, as well as being able to uh, continue to use these portals for more detailed information as well. Um, so thank you so much for listening to today's um, webinar on aid data use. Um, this is being po this is posted on our website, um, along with all of the other information uh, you will need to go through it. Um, you know, so feel free to go through. Um, when we actually did the webinars live, there were some quizzes um, which we've posted on our website, um, which you can try and answer using the information um, you got today. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, please do feel free to email us. Our emails are um, on the side of this on the web page that you found this data, um, video on. And we'd love to talk more about aid data use. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to post more webinars in the future. Uh, this one is in English, clearly, um, but there is also a French one that is posted on our website as well, or that will be soon. Um, so if you are looking for more information uh, in a different language, um, there will be a French one that is posted as well. And thank you so much, um, everybody, for tuning in. Um, and we really appreciate your attendance today. Thank you.